In this video and the next video, we're going to solve this system of linear differential equations. In this video, we'll find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In the next video, we will see how to put them together into a general solution. So first I want us to notice that this is in the correct form. This is the form that we've been dealing with. We have three functions, y1, y2, and y3. They're functions of t, and the derivative of each function is a linear combination of the values of the other functions. So I don't have, for instance, y1 times y2, that would be uh, something different that we don't know how to solve. Uh, and I don't have any other functions. There's no y4 whose derivative, I don't know. The first step is to get the matrix of coefficients. That's the matrix we're going to be working with. And notice these are all sort of in the proper order, right? It's first y1, and then y2, and then y3. So we can just copy this down. 10 minus 5 minus 1 from the top, 12 minus 6 minus 2 from the second line, and 7 minus 3, 0 from the third line. This is going to be our matrix of coefficients. This is the matrix whose eigenvalues and eigenvectors we want to find. The first thing we're going to do is find the eigenvalues of A. Remember this happens when 0 is equal to the determinant of a minus lambda i. i is the identity matrix, so lambda i is the matrix with lambdas down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So a minus lambda i is what I get if I subtract lambda from all of the diagonals of a. <clears throat> so for the matrix that I'm actually taking the determinant of, I'm going to subtract lambda from these diagonals. and everything else stays the same. Now as normal when I'm taking the determinant, I want to be as lazy as possible. So I think the easiest uh, line to expand around, remember we can expand around a row or a column, I think the easiest line to expand around is this third column. There aren't a lot of zeros anywhere, but this seems like the simplest. So that I get my plus minuses right. Ordinarily, I would add subtract and add, but this goes on like a chessboard, so I subtract here and I add here. So this will be minus 1 times the determinant of what I get when I delete the first row and first column, which is 12 minus 6 minus lambda, 7 minus 3. Now I'm going to move on to this negative 2. That's in a negative space, so I'm going to add 2 times the determinant of what I get when I delete its row and column. And finally, I'm going to move on to this minus lambda. It's in a plus box, so I don't have to flip that sign. And I'm going to take the determinant of what I get when I delete the row and column of lambda. All right, so I need to figure out these determinants. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36 minus 7 times minus 6 minus lambda. That's my first determinant, plus 2 times my second determinant, and now minus lambda times my third determinant. I've just expanded things a little. You can pause it if you want to check where it came from. I'll keep simplifying. And now I've simplified it down to a nice cubic function. So remember what we're trying to do. At the very top, it says we want to find when this determinant is equal to 0. So I need to find the roots of this. It's not always super easy to factor a cubic. The cubic version of the quadratic equation is extremely complicated. Uh, but this one factors quite nicely. So notice I have this 1, 4, 1, 4 pattern that if I factor out a lambda squared from my first two terms, I get minus lambda plus 4. And then my last two terms are just minus lambda plus 4. So I've just factored a minus lambda out of these first two terms. And now I can factor out that minus lambda plus 4. This is lambda squared plus 1 times minus lambda plus 4. So now if I set this equal to 0, it's very easy to find my roots. My first root from that second piece is that lambda is equal to 4. 
Uh, if this bit is equal to zero, that gives me lambda equals to four. If this bit isn't zero, that means this bit has to be zero. So I also get that lambda squared is negative one, which means lambda is the plus or minus square root of negative one, which is plus or minus i. So here are my three eigenvalues. Now that I have my eigenvalues, I can find my eigenvectors. So here's my matrix once again, and here are the eigenvalues that I found. Now I want to find my eigenvectors. My ultimate goal is that I want to find uh, the general solution to the system of linear differential equations. So actually, since the second two eigenvalues are complex conjugates of one another, I know their eigenvectors are going to be complex conjugates of one another, so I really only need to find uh, what's going on with that second eigenvalue, and I can ignore the third one. But let's start with the first one. So what we want to do is we want to solve this system of equations. We can't exactly reduce a because the right-hand side isn't constant. It's, it depends on x, y, and z. So let's write this out as a system of equations. And now I can see that if I just subtract those right-hand sides over, I'll get a homogeneous system of equations. If I subtract 4x from both sides of the top equation, this is what I get. Now I'll subtract 4y from both sides of the second equation. And finally, I'll subtract 4z from both sides of the bottom equation. Now I have a homogeneous system of equations to solve, and this one I can solve using Gaussian elimination. For smaller ones, like a 2 by 2, it's usually easiest to just jump straight into substitution, but you can also do it with Gaussian elimination. Now remember, as soon as I find one solution to this uh, system of equations, there's going to be every scalar multiple of it as a solution as well. So we're going to expect that we're not going to have rank 3. We'll have rank 1 or 2. There's going to be at least one parameter in our solution. I'm going to maybe pivot around this 6. So I'll take row 2 minus 2 times row 1. That automatically gets me a row of all zeros, which is pretty nice. Now I think instead of dividing the top by 6 to get a 1, maybe I'll take row 3 and I'll subtract row 1 from it. And now maybe I'll pivot around that nice one. Now I think it's a good idea to divide by negative 17 on row 1. Now I can pivot around that one. So now we can either write this in parametric form or we can solve by substitution. The top tells us that y minus z is equal to 0, so y has to be equal to z. The bottom row tells us x minus z has to be 0. So x has to be z. So our solutions look like anything where x, y, and z are the same. So for example, I could take 1, 1, 1. If z is 1, then this here tells me y is 1, and this here tells me x is 1 as well. You could also use minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, or 2, 2, 2. Just be sure you don't use 0, 0, 0, because that one is a solution to this system of equations, but it is not an eigenvector. So we found our first eigenvalue eigenvector pair. We found that when I let 4 be my first eigenvalue, I can let my corresponding eigenvector be 1, 1, 1. Now let's look at what's going on with lambda 2. So I want to figure out which vectors have the property that multiplying by my matrix is the same as multiplying by the scalar i. Again, I'm going to write this as a system of equations. I'm going to sort of expand it out. Uh, if you're comfortable, you can realize that you're just subtracting i from all the main diagonals before you make your homogeneous system of equations. If you're not comfortable with that, let's do it out. So this is what our system of linear equations is saying, and now we just need to subtract these bits over. And again, if you want to skip this step, this is just equivalent to subtracting 
Whatever your value was, last time it was a four, this time it's an I from the main diagonal. So here's our corresponding uh, homogeneous system of linear equations, and this one we can solve by Gaussian elimination. I think I might break from tradition and pivot around the least nasty looking thing. So maybe I'll pivot around this negative one. I can take row two and subtract two row one from it. And I can also take row three and subtract I row one from it. The second row is pretty straightforward. For the third row, I'm first taking 7 minus i times 10 minus i, which looks like 7 minus 10i plus i squared, which looks like 7 minus 10i minus 1, gives me 6 minus 10i. For the second spot, I'm doing minus 3 minus i times minus 5, which is minus 3 plus 5i. And for the third spot, I'm taking minus i minus i times minus 1, which is minus i plus i, which is 0. That was my goal. There, these entries and these entries, they're just minus 2 times them, right? Minus 2 times 4 minus i is minus 8 plus 2i, and that's exactly what I have. So I can take row 2, and I can divide by 4 minus i. And since this first entry is just minus 2 times 4 minus i, there's just going to be a minus 2 here. Same thing with the third row. If I divide by minus 3 plus 5i, notice that uh, negative 2 times minus 3 plus 5i gives us 6 minus 10i, which is exactly what we have there. So this entry in the bottom left is negative 2 times minus 3 plus 5i. So when I divide by minus 3 plus 5i, I'm left with a negative 2. All right, now I can take row 3 and subtract row 2 from it. Remember, whenever something is an eigenvector, all of its scalar multiples are eigenvectors as well. So we always expect to have a solution that has some parameter in it. The number of parameters is the number of unknowns minus your rank. So we want our rank to be less than 3. So we always expect to get a, a row of all zeros somewhere. Now maybe I'll pivot once more and then I'll do some substitution. Maybe I'll take row 1 and add 5 row 2 to it. This first entry just gives me negative i, then 0, then negative 1. All right, now this is pretty simple. I should be able to get something nice from here. So this tells me minus ix minus z is equal to 0, which is the same as saying that z is minus i times x. The second one tells me minus 2 times x plus y equals 0, which tells me y is equal to 2x. So as soon as I choose my x, I can figure out what y is, and I can figure out what z is. So why don't I go ahead and choose x to be 1, then y is 2 times x, and z is negative i times x. And I can let this be my second eigenvector corresponding to my second eigenvalue, which was i. Now if I wanted to find the third eigenvector, I would just remember that because my third eigenvalue was the complex conjugate of my second eigenvalue, I can choose my third eigenvector to be the complex conjugate of my second one. So that would be 1, 2, positive i. 